Unreal Engine just released the preview for version 5.2 and with it, it comes a whole new system for procedural content generation. And you probably have seen this clip. So Jacob's going to go ahead and add a procedural assembly to the world. And the cool thing is that it communicates. Thank you. Yeah. I was amazed by this and I immediately wanted to try it out for myself, but sadly all resources I could find were limited to the most basic features. So I pulled an all-nighter and tried out different things and now I want to share my experiences with you and go a little bit deeper into what is really possible with this new system. As a disclaimer, this is not a tutorial which you can follow step by step, instead I will explain some concepts and you should be able to think for yourself what you want to do with them in your own projects. I might link some other tutorials in the description below. I will give you access to my projects files. But now let's get started. Let's start with a very simple scene setup. I have a landscape and a PCG volume with this graph assigned to it. In most cases you might want to start your setup with a sampler. A sampler generates points. Here I am using a surface sampler which generates points on our landscape. Because we are executing this in the context of a volume, we get this volume as an input from this input node. We are using it as a bounding shape for this surface sampler. So if we want to see what's going on in the sampler, we can select it and press D. As you can see, we have our points inside of the volume. The grayscale value that you can see here for each point is called the density and it is assigned randomly Next up is the side to density function. As you can see now, our density value is dependent on the z value of each individual point. If you want to add randomness, we can use this density noise function, which again generates random values for each individual point. I have this node set to add mode because I want to combine it with our previous density values. Another important function you might come across very often is this filter because it removes all points that don't fall into this bound. Now I want to talk about another sampler which is this volume sampler and it generates a voxel grid. We can plug that into the rest of our graph. Here for the height we need to set other values because now the height scale is a little bit different. But the other nodes should work as expected. Now we get some other interesting shape. I don't know what to do with it, but you might find a purpose for that. Now I did some experimentation on this canyon, which comes a little bit closer to the assembly we have seen in the presentation. So let's see how this canyon looks like. It is a blueprint, which has a spline component and a procedural content generation component. I also added a property which is called canyon width. And on this PCG component I have a whole new graph. If you are working on bigger projects you might want to use subgraphs. Subgraphs get executed inside of a parent graph and can have custom in and outputs. Let's take a look at this cliff subgraph which I use for the outer rocks of our canyon. So the first very difference we see is that I use a spline sampler. I also have another subgraph which is called canyon half width. And if we open that up, we can see that it uses this node property to param data. And we can use it for extracting property values from a blueprint. So I select the property name canyon width from our blueprint. And because we are executing it inside of the context of our blueprint, uh, I can use this actor filter called self. So it will extract the information from its context. If we look at the spline, we can see that it is below the terrain. And if we want to bring these points up to the terrain itself, I can choose between two projection nodes. I chose the more general projection node, because on this project points on landscape node, also the rotational information of our points get updated to the normal of the landscape. And I don't want it in my case because I want to preserve the information that I get from the spline. 
And since our PCG component is not directly linked to a landscape anymore, this get landscape data node needs to have another target. So for that, I set the actor filter over here to all world actors and I selected them by class and for the class I selected landscape. This resembles the get all actors of class node you might know from blueprint. At the bottom of the cliffs, I want to add another row of rocks to add a little bit of blend. For that, I'm using this distance node, which calculates for each point in the source array, the distance to the closest point in the target array. For the source, I use random points on the landscape and the target are the points on the, our spline. Another powerful thing are attributes, which exist for every individual point. To get an overview of attributes, I can select a debug object and then I can press I on this node and I get a list down here. I'll full screen this for now. And what this node does is it assigns an attribute called distance to each point. So if we go all the way here, we can see that there is now a distance attribute. I also want to encourage you to do some performance optimizations. So as you can see, I now have a huge list of close to 100,000 points. And you might want to filter out points as soon as possible if you know you don't use them. So in here, I already filter out points that are too far away. So I have a way, way smaller set of points to work with. So if I inspect it now, I only have like 4,000 points. So now I want to change a little bit where these rocks spawn. So I have this curve from a density node to control the density based on a curve. What I also wanted to do is to scale the rocks based on the distance to the center, just to add a little bit more to the plant. For that I found the scale by density node. The only problem was I now have to bring that distance value into the density. And for that I created a custom blueprint node. And what this blueprint does is that it brings this distance value and maps it to a space which I customize in here to the density. And then I scale the point with the scale by density node. So let's see what this does. This blueprint inherits from PCG blueprint element. In here we have to override two functions. The first one is execute with context and then we have to override this point loop body. For the execute with context, I have no idea what's happening. I just copy and pasted it from another node. But the interesting part is the loop body. Here's where I extract this attribute and then write the value back to the density. So, and last but not least, we have a static mesh spawner which just generates static meshes based on the points. It's very straightforward. You can customize all the entries in here. So I just added some rocks. So I hope I could give you a little bit of inspiration on how you can use this system for your own project. And I want to add, this is my very first video on YouTube. So I am especially grateful for any kind of feedback that you can give me. So just leave a like if you enjoyed this type of content or just leave a comment on what you want to know next. I plan on how to use multiple of these systems in one big scene and how these systems would communicate with each other. Also, I might want to look into how we can create complex buildings with this system. So if you want to get updates on that, also feel free to subscribe to this channel.